Um, I'm just going to bring up David Dimbleby because he's done a podcast on the Sun King recently about Rupert Murdoch. And I was just wondering how Labour's going to win any election when his newspapers like The Sun and The Times are having such a effect on northerners, for example, manipulating them. Let's use the word brainwashing because that's really what it comes down to with their mm. headlines mm. and so on. There's no chance All right. mm. without mm. their well, support. Well, all of them. Mm. Well, the vast majority of right. papers. Mm. Uh, and Rupert Murdoch, I bring up particularly. OK, well, should we go to... We've got someone who works for Murdoch paper, so, Sarah, I think you're perfectly placed <laughs> to answer that question. I've never heard so much rubbish. I mean, what a good excuse <laughs> for the biggest Labour election defeat since 1935. I mean, it really is pathetic to blame the press. Um, well, honestly, they... I think you are underestimating the intelligence and wit and savvy of no, your fellow pathetic, citizens. Uh... And I think Labour under Jeremy Corbyn and Labour under almost any of the leaders, and I'm sorry to say I include you in this at the moment, Emily, uh, are um, making the same mistake of underestimating the electorate, pretending that Labour is not in an existentialist crisis, it could sink further in votes. There's about another 30 seats in Labour's red wall that could easily go. And um, I don't even think they're particularly listening to Londoners. I don't know who they're listening to in Labour apart from themselves. There's one candidate, Lisa Nandy, who's doing quite well and getting a little bit of attention purely because she said one thing that was absolutely 100% true. She said Labour's got to change or die. Mm. And that's the situation that Jeremy Corbyn has landed his party in. Mike, I know you want to come into a bit, but...